Good morning and welcome to Hasbury Christian Fellowship on Sunday the 3rd of January 2021 and may I wish you all a very happy new year. Uh, who can believe it's 2021 already. 2020 of course was a, a has been a very strange year and we'd started this year off and it's still difficult and it's very strange and we're pinning a lot of our hope um, physically pinning a lot of our hope on this vaccine that is being rolled out across our nation and hopefully across the world very very soon uh, but of course spiritually we put our hope in Christ and we have our hope in him and we've been thinking a lot about that recently today being the 3rd of January is kind of the last Sunday this winter that we're going to be thinking about a Christmas theme so we've still got our Christmas tree in the background here and we're thinking about the wise men. Of course, it was um, anything up to two years after Jesus was born, when the wise men came to visit, they didn't come to see Jesus at the same time as the shepherds, which is the sort of traditional nativity scene that we often see. It could have been anything up to two years after. And we know that Mary and Joseph and Jesus were in a house by that stage because it said they came to the house where Jesus was. Um, so we're going to be thinking about that today. So we are going to sing some Christmas songs again. As I say, it'll be the last time this winter. We're going to start by singing two songs that help us to think a little bit about the wise men and about the gift of Christmas and the gifts that, that the wise men brought. We're going to sing, Oh, come and join the dance that all began so long ago when Christ the Lord was born in Bethlehem. And we will follow that by singing, can you hear the Christmas bells ring? Let's sing together. Oh, come and join the dance that all began so long ago When Christ the Lord was born in Bethlehem Shed your heavy load and dance your worries all away For Christ the Lord was born in Bethlehem He came to break the power of sin and time united today Oh take my hand and come and join the song Rejoice, 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 rejoice So lift your voice and sing And open up your hearts to welcome Him Rejoice, 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 rejoice And welcome now your King For Christ the Lord was born in Bethlehem
that song that we just set, set, sung says, wise men bring their gifts before him, frankincense and myrrh and gold. And as they brought their gifts of worship, we bring our gifts of worship to the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this uh, celebration of Christmas that we have been able to enjoy. We are very aware that Christmas this year has been very different for, for everybody. And uh, there are so many people across our nation, across our world, who are mourning because there is somebody missing this Christmas who they were expecting to be here. And Lord, again, we just bring people in their mourning, in their sadness, in their despair at times, we bring them to you. We thank you that you are the God of hope, the God of peace, the God of comfort. And we pray that your comfort and your peace will sweep across us, will indwell each one of us. We pray that our hope in you during these coming months will be realised with this hope in the vaccine and that our world will begin to change and get back to um, a, a sense of normality again. Lord, there are and many people at the start of a new year who have hope for a new year but also look back at the last year with with sadness and we just put this year into your hands lord we ask you at the start of this new year please indwell us enrich us fill us with your spirit fill us with your love fill us with your compassion and your hope and lord Whatever this coming year may hold, we thank you that you are with us. You are walking beside us every step of the way. Help us to stay close to you. And Lord, this morning as we think about the Magi that came to visit you, as we think about the gifts that they brought to you and all the significance of these three strange visitors or however many there were, Lord, we pray that you will speak to each one of us, encourage us, bless us, challenge us, Lord. Thank you for this time that we can spend together. Amen. OK, um, from this weekend, most things at the church will be back to pre-Christmas normal, not back to normal normal. Um, so most of the things that we're doing online, on Zoom, on WhatsApp, will be back on from this from this coming week. Before Christmas, we were collecting the reverse Advent calendars. Some of us were for Birmingham City Mission. If you've got one of those that you want to go across to Birmingham City Mission, then let me know. And sometime during this coming week, I'm going to try and collect them all in and take them all over at a convenient time to the City Mission. Or, of course, if you prefer to give a cash donation, as we've been doing um, since March, then please uh, let Jeremy know um, and donate. you can donate through the church. We're going to sing another song together. We're going to sing, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Let's sing this together. And at Christmas time, we think about God sending his only son. And, and we also think about the sacrifice that God made in doing that. And the fact that Jesus came into our world for a reason, for a purpose. Let's sing together, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. And uh, this song talks about um, the, the hope and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And think about that gift of God coming into the world silently, coming into the world in Bethlehem. Let's sing together.
like to read a meditation for you. It's called Meditation of the Magi and it's by Nick Fawcett. Those of you that came to the walk around Christmas, if you came with young children then we did one thing relating to the, to the wise men or the Magi. If you came without young children then you may have read or I may have read to you this meditation. But that's not many of you and when I found this on the internet I thought that this was um, really powerful so I wanted to use it this morning. Meditation of the Magi. Do you know what we gave him? That little boy in Bethlehem. Go on, have a guess. A rattle? A toy? A teddy bear? No, nothing like that. In fact, nothing you'd associate with a child at all, even if he was destined to be a king. Gold, that's what I brought. And my companions, wait for it. Frankincense and myrrh. Yes, I thought you'd be surprised. For to tell the truth, we're pretty amazed ourselves looking back, unable to imagine what on earth possessed us to choose such exotic and unusual gifts. It wasn't so much that they were costly, though they were, of course. To a family like his, they were riches beyond their means, beyond their dreams. But we could more than afford it. Little more than small change to men of our means. No, it wasn't the price that troubled us afterwards, but the associations, the possible meaning his parents might have read into our presence when we'd gone. Not the gold. There was no problem there. A gift fit for a king and designed to say as much, of course. But frankincense, well, the main use his people have for that, as we learned later, 
is to sweeten their sacrifices, to pour out onto their burnt offerings so that the fragrance might be pleasing to their God. Hardly the most appropriate gift for a baby. But compared with myrrh, don't tell me you don't know. It was a drug used to soothe pain. Either that or as a spice for embalming. More fitting for a funeral than for a birth. Having more to do with suffering and death than celebration. So what were we thinking of? What possible significance could gifts like those have for a little child? Frankly, I had no idea. Yet, at the time, the choice seemed as obvious to us as, as following the star, as though each were all part of some greater purpose, which would one day become clear to all. Were we, were we right? Well, after all I've said, I rather hope not. For if this king was born to die, to be offered in sacrifice, rather than enthroned in splendour, then his must be an unusual kingdom. Very different from most we come across. In fact, you might say, not a kingdom of this world at all. Lord Jesus Christ, you were born so that you might die. You took on our humanity so that you might experience also our mortality. Only through identifying yourself so totally with us could you bridge the gap that separates us from God. You showed us the way of love and you followed it to the end. You proclaimed forgiveness and you paid the price to make it possible. In life and in death, you testified to the grace of the Father and his purpose for all the world. Help us as we celebrate again your birth, never to forget that this was just the beginning of the story. As we greet you now as the child of Bethlehem, so let us greet you also as the crucified Saviour and the risen Lord. And may we offer you this and every day our joyful worship in grateful praise. Amen. Before David comes to speak to us this morning, we're going to sing one more song together. We've just read, listened to those words together, a, a kingdom not of this world at all. Let's sing together, King of Kings, Majesty, God of heaven living in me, and then David will speak for us.
Good morning, everyone. It's good to be able to share with you again. I want us to think this morning about the epiphany. Um, that is the coming of the Magi. Uh, in churches around the, the world, people will be thinking specifically about the Magi today, as it's the, the Sunday before the official Epiphany Day, the 12th day, which is the 6th of January. In certain places, it's called Three Kings Day, or Theophany, or Little Christmas. Uh, in the Eastern Orthodox Church, it's often used to um, celebrate the baptism of Jesus. The origins of the word epiphany uh, come from a Greek verb to mean, that means to appear. And if we look up some dictionary definitions of, epiph of epiphany, we get manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the Magi, a manifestation of a divine or supernatural being, or a moment of sudden and great revelation and realization. From a Christian point of view, we can say that Epiphany is in the Christian world, it is a feast day that celebrates the revelation, or theophany, of God incarnate as Jesus Christ. And because it was related to the Christmas story about the Magi, let's read that. It's only um, Matthew's Gospel that records it for us, and it's in Matthew uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found from them the exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. May the Lord bless his word to us. Shall we just pray? Lord, we thank you for your word. Pray now that by your spirit you will speak to each one of us and that Jesus, only your truths might remain with us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't want to go through um, this scripture verse by verse, and I'm not going to think about the significance of the gifts. Joy has kind of um, shared a bit about that earlier on. I do want to think about who the Magi were and what is their significance for us today. So our first question is, who were the Magi? Um, biblically, there's not a lot of information. We just know that we're from East and they were called Magi. Our kind of idea of who they might be is probably gleaned um, from historical research, but also from looking at some of the Old Testament scriptures of people that fulfilled the kind of role that the Magi carried out themselves. There were pagan worshippers, basically, of some early pagan religions. They came from the east, probably from the area of Iran at that time, Mesopotamia. And the word that was given to them, magi, which was plural, magus for a, a, an individual person, it basically meant a practiser of magic. 
a sorcerer, an illusionist, or a, a fortune teller. They probably delved into things like looking at astronomy, astrology, alchemy, messing with chemicals, trying to make gold out of, of base substances. They probably dabbled a bit in the dark arts in some way. And as I say, it's where we get the word magician from. In one sense, they were probably quite well respected within their society. They might have been leaders, they might have been kings. But they certainly were probably advisors to the royal court of their own land. They'd be wealthy, they were influential. But the bottom line is that they were pagan worshippers. So what were they up to? Well, I suppose in one sense, they were kind of into a bit of everything. They were trying to find out things, to gain understanding, to gain knowledge, to seek and to find out what life is about, what is the meaning of life. And they were probably seeking answers to the questions that you and I have had or are having. Who am I? What is my purpose? And in a sense, they're to be quite commended. Even though they were from a pagan religion, they were trying to put their foot firmly in where the truth lay. I'm reminded of the verses in Revelation, where Jesus is warning the Christians in the church in Laodicea. He's saying to them, you know, you're, you're neither hot nor cold, you're lukewarm. And he kind of chastises them for that. These magi were trying to put their foot, they were either trying to be hot or cold, but they were trying to make an effort. They were seeking. They wanted to find out the truth. What do we try and seek in our 21st century? Well, sometimes we try and fill our lives and seek it with wealth, with comfort, with health. But aren't they really, if we think about it, just all attempts to find out what brings us peace? Because if we think about ourselves, that's what we want. We want to f have peace. We want to know the purpose of why we're in this universe. What is our place? What is our significance? We want to find out the truth. And that's what I believe the Magi were seeking. And in their search for the meaning, it was God who became the initiator. And God is the initiator. It was God who reached out to them. He sent a star, whatever that was, astronomically, whether it was conjunction of planets, whether it was a comet, or whether it was something entirely supernatural that God sent. Some have suggested it was an angel that guided the way. It doesn't really matter. But it was God initiating. They might also have had pieces of scripture, bits of parchment that had been discovered or they'd, they'd found and bought or people had come with stories from the West and from Israel and told them about some of the things that God had been doing. Some of the prophecies, for example, Balaam in the book of Numbers, we read, a star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. And maybe when they were looking at the skies, they saw that star and thought, oh, and things started to click. But God was the initiator. And the point of it all is that the Magi responded to that. They got, got, they got moving. You know, God doesn't always reveal everything to us when we want to know it, when we want an answer. And in many ways, because of his plans and his purposes, he'll communicate to us uh, in lots of different ways. And especially if it's about building us up to actually put our trust in him, maybe, for the very first time. As Christians, we might be called to get moving because we might be being prompt, we might be prompted by the Holy Spirit to go and speak to somebody, to offer support, to offer aid, to help somebody. God scripturally calls us to sow seeds. Nuggets of communication that God wants to use to draw people to him. Those that are seeking him. So let us, if we're believers in Jesus, believers in God, let's honour God by listening to his call and by responding and getting moving. 
But maybe God is challenging you to seek him for the very first time. You know, and some of the old corny sayings are still very true, that wise men still seek him. And that a carpenter from Nazareth requires joiners. For the wise men, for the magi, the answer didn't come overnight. It was for them a long journey of discovery. Following a star, but with an expectancy. God sometimes calls us on a journey of discovery as he reveals himself to us. Don't always think it's going to happen right in a flash in a second. It might be an epiphany, a great revelation. But very often we're on a journey of discovery. The logic of the Magi would suggest that the king was going to be born in a palace. And so as the star led them across to Jerusalem, they went to see King Herod. I don't know if you've ever kind of played hide and seek or, or hidden an object in a room and then people come in and have to try and find it and you tell them whether it's hot or cold as they're getting closer to where you've located it. Sometimes the item you can put in plain sight and, and people don't see it for quite some time. In a sense, the religious leaders at that time were a bit like that. They'd got the scriptures, but nothing really had clicked at all for them. And it's only Herod when he says, well, what's happening here? That they went and looked and they found the clues in God's word. For us, let's not ignore the clues that are in God's word for us about how we should live our lives. He lays out everything for us, whatever our question, whatever our problem might be, whatever we are seeking, you will find an answer in scripture with God. The Magi had kind of arrived after traveling for several months. Mesopotamia is 400 to 700 miles away, 10 miles a day by camel um, has been estimated. So they, they took the time several months to get there. Mary and Joseph, after the birth, they, we know that they went up to, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, which is about five and a half miles. That was for Mary's purification. That would have been after 40 days. And then, most likely, they would have carried on back up to Nazareth. The Magi were told the prophecy about Bethlehem from Herod, but the Magi followed the star. It doesn't say that they went to Bethlehem. They didn't follow Herod's instructions. They followed the star. And that, where it came to rest was where the child was. Remember, your journey to Jesus might be slow and it might be gradual. In some ways it might be like a jigsaw. I like doing jigsaw puzzles, you know, and you look at the pieces. Sometimes you try and fit each piece to, to get it to go and it, it works or it doesn't. Sometimes one of the things I like to do is just look at the piece and I manipulate it in my head, look at the colours, look at the shape and see where it might fit. But it will get to that point where with persistence suddenly everything comes together and you get it. It fits. It's an epiphany. A great realisation. But in a sense it's a revelation from God revealing himself to you. And it's God speaking into your heart. It may be that first time of leap of faith and you realise and everything fits and you know that Jesus is the answer. For Christians, it might be that we're seeking an answer over an issue and as we're reading God's word, then suddenly God speaks to us through it. He reveals himself. We have that epiphany. Everything fits in place and we're at peace about where we're going to go and what we need to do. When the Magi arrived, what were they expecting? Was it a palace fit for a king? Probably not a, a cottage or some little village in, in a, a, way off a way off track from out of nowhere. They weren't expecting that. And yet, it wasn't the surroundings that were the important thing. This was about the spiritual. When they arrived, they knew that they had arrived 
at the answer that they were seeking. They had found the Christ child and their response was to worship. I guess they didn't understand it all. We don't all understand how God works. He reveals little bits, but what they were doing was willing to yield and to worship and to surrender and bow down to him. And they gave their possessions, the gifts that they had brought, which was all part of God's providential care for his child. So we have all those factors in play. It's a kind of symbolic act, as we mentioned at the beginning. The Christ child has revealed himself to the Gentiles, to the non-Jews. We're reminded that Christ has been born for all peoples, for all nations, for all creeds, for all religions. God had reached out to pagan priests, clearly identified and understood as sinners, and yet God had reached out to them. He reaches out to us. They had been dabbling in the occult, which is so much spoken against in the Jewish scriptures but it had led them to the point of surrender and to worship. And God will also lead us to a point of acknowledging his lordship if we allow him to do so. The invitation to come is given to both you and I. Maybe it's to seek and to find Jesus Christ for that very first time. Or as a believer, it's just to come and worship, to rest in his presence, to renew our strength for the days that are to come. And for the Magi, they had affirmation because after they'd seen the child, then God spoke to them in a dream to kind of avoid going back home via Jerusalem and Herod. They must avoid Herod. I don't know whether they all had the same dream, whether it was a collective one or one of them said, oh, I've had this dream, and they followed it. But it was confirmation of God working in their lives and that God was real. Let us look to affirm the ways in which God has been directing our lives. Look back, think what God is doing, and give thanks and know that we have the hope that he'll be working in our lives in the future. The experience of the Magi was not to be locked away in their memory banks. This wasn't a secret magic trick that they had to closely guard the secret of. God had done everything differently from the way they had been expecting it. And so it would have made quite a lasting impression on their minds, I think. And something that gave them a story to tell back home, a story they would tell to their children, to their grandchildren, to the village, to those around. Whether others believed it or not, they knew that they had met the King of the Jews. They had met the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, just a baby. You and I are inheritors of that journey. And we know the result of it. We know that Jesus lived his 30 years before he took on the ministry of preaching the kingdom of God, of healing the sick, and eventually of taking his place upon a cross to deal with our sin, our rebellion against God. We know the outcome. We know that Jesus was died, was buried, and rose from the grave, and is alive now, and is a man in glory. They're representing us at the Father's throne. We know who that baby was. We know who that baby is and all that he has done and is doing for mankind. So let us, like the Magi, seek the truth and come to our Lord Jesus Christ and bow down and worship him. Amen. Thank you for that, David. Let's finish our time together this morning by saying the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.